This is my land. I was born here. When I was young, I trained here, learning the Bushido, the way of the warrior. But that was long ago. Now we live in an age of war. My neighbors are now my enemies, and my home is now my fortress. Here we stand, and if we should fall, our honor is still great. The training has finished. Leadership is a matter of intelligence, trustworthiness, humanity, courage, and sternness. Draw them in with prospect of gain. Take them by confusion. One who is good at martial arts overcomes enemies' forces without battle, conquers enemies' cities without siege, destroys enemies' nations without taking a long time. The rule for use of the military is that if you outnumber the opponent 10 to 1, then surround them. 5 to 1, attack. 2 to 1, divide. Those who know when to fight and when not to fight are victorious. Those who discern when to use many or few troops are victorious. Those whose upper and lower ranks have the same desire are victorious. Those whose generals are able and are not constrained by their governments are victorious. These five are the ways to know who will win. Invincibility is a matter of defense. Vulnerability is a matter of attack. In ancient times, skillful warriors first made themselves invincible, and then watched for vulnerability in their opponents. This is our land and it shall be stained with blood. One day, it shall again be like it was when I was young. One day my country shall be reunited. The path to peace is a dangerous journey, but there shall be peace, peace under my flag, a peace carved by my sword. One day, but not today. Know your enemy, know yourself, and your victory is never in danger. I am Kublai Khan, the Great Khan. 
My lands stretch from sunrise to sunset. I reach out my hand, and all men tremble. I ride with the horde at my back. We conquer everything before us. We attack. We conquer. We are fearless and unstoppable. From the far Danube to the heart of ancient China, we ride and no enemy is left alive. My warriors? Ha! There are none greater in all the world. And these samurai will stand against us. Us. They are fools and will die like fools. Their Japan will be mine. This I promise. This is an age of darkness.
product not yet rated. My son, seek out a kingdom worthy of thyself, for Macedonia is too little for thee.
SEGA. Sega. Great spirit. Long ago, I had a vision. Our fields were green, our rivers pure, and our food plentiful. But darkness came and covered the world. When the first white men arrived, we welcomed them. But the tide of the white man could not be stopped. The few became many, and they brought guns. They brought sickness. They brought war. So we fought them. Now our air is poison. Our rivers are dry, and our people are few. Iroquois, Huron. Plains, Pueblo, and Cherokee are scattered as seeds in the wind. Across the land, our shamans teach the old ways. Our scouts go among our enemies, spreading doubt and fear. We know their ways of iron, their battle skills, and their weapons. And we have made our own. As Mohawk, Petun Wolf warriors, Blackfoot Bloods, and the Braves of all tribes take up arms once more, it is for the last time, for the end of our enemies, or the death of the world. Great Spirit, we need your strength and wisdom. Sega. Mes ennemis sont nombreux, mais je n'ai pas d'égal. À l'ombre des oliviers, il disait que l'Italie ne serait jamais conquise. Dans la vallée des Pharaons, il disait que l'Égypte ne serait jamais vaincue. 
Depuis les forêts enneigées, il disait que la Russie ne serait jamais domptée. Désormais, ils ne disent plus rien. Ils me craignent, comme ils craignent les cataclysmes, la foudre et la mort. Je suis Napoléon. Je suis empereur. Brûlez-le Sega. My enemies are many. My equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Talea could never be conquered. In the land of Emily, they said Cetra could never be humbled. In the realm of forest and snow, they said Kislev could never be tamed. Now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am King Luan Leonke. I am Emperor. Burn it! Peggy 16. Sega. As we arrived, the weather was against us, but nothing could dampen our spirits. The Iberian Peninsula. Sun-baked land of mountains, scrubland, and desert plains. This rugged terrain will be our battleground. We know the fighting will be fierce. The French are strong, and many in number. Victory for them is expected. Our position seems desperate. A small British foothold in the south, with Spain and Portugal struggling for power in the east and the west. All else is under Napoleon's control. But their strength will become their weakness. Over such a large area, the French cannot defend every town, city and fort. And where they are few, we will strike. Led by generals who fight like lions. With new technologies to aid our campaign. In retaliation, the French try to undermine our confidence, spreading lies and propaganda. But their words fail to crush the people's spirit. Sermons of faith incite civil unrest. 
while the Guerrillero harass the French army wherever they can. And if words cannot carry the day, the people rise up and fight. The famed guerrilla wage a new kind of war, a conflict of stealth and ambush, an insurgency that threatens all French authority. We know the challenge is great, but the men are confident of victory. For as we liberate this land, so strengthens our trade, our resolve, and our military might. As we go stronger, the French grow weaker. We will be victorious. The peninsula will be free. Sega. Peggy 16. Sega. Beauty and harmony. Governed by one eternal law. All that begins must end. The reign of the old shogunate is over!
Peggy 16. Sega. Sega. Japan, 1175. Three families, one terrible battle for control of Japan, and a new class of warriors, the samurai. A new campaign for Total War Shogun 2. Conquer Japan in single player and multiplayer co-op or versus. Six new clans belonging to three great families. The Tyra. Behind the Imperial throne, subtle, powerful, and ready to crush their opposition. The Minamoto, warriors to the core, with vengeance in their hearts. And the Fujiwara, the old order, ready to reclaim past glories. Four new agents including the Shirabyoshi, seducer and destroyer. The Junsatsushi, persuader, corruptor. Lead 30 new battle units, among them Tetsubo warrior monks, mounted samurai archers, onabush heroines carrying wickedly sharp naginata. And so it begins. The Rise of the Samurai. September 2011. Only on Steam. Sega.
Peggy 16. Sega. I first set foot in the land of the rising sun in 1865. I went to earn an honest soldier's living. Training their armies. To my surprise, Japan is not a completely primitive land. Factories darken the sky with smoke. Just like Pittsburgh back home. Change is already bringing new cruelties. Resentment towards the Shogun grows by the day. The Emperor's men gather new allies to seize control of the country. Foreigners sell guns to all sides, and foreigners like me teach the Japanese to use them. This place is a powder keg. Guess I found myself a new civil war. Sega. Sega. Peggy 16. Sega.
Peggy 16. Sega. Peggy 16. Sega. Sega.
Sega. Carthage makes a mockery of Rome. They must be punished. Those walls can withstand any attack. Scipio will not fail. They will never surrender! Take those walls! Gods, what have we done? Sega. Varus. Oh! Quintus Varus, give me back my legions! Arminius will betray Rome. You must turn back. Arminius, a traitor? I think not. Raised me, trained me, but my loyalty is to my people! Germania will be free! We who are seen as gods have the farthest to fall. For have we not built the impossible? And for what? To share my bed with a Roman. Our alliance was born of necessity, not love. To rule as Isis, I would suckle the wolf. They must be But no punished. matter how much I fed the beast, it could not be sated. I betrayed my lover, brought ruin on my brother, murdered my sister. Any mother would have done the same. And still they will hunt you down, my son. The last of the Pharaoh. Peggy 16. Sega. No king! The stakes led to this. This is the part you chose.
the Gauls. They would rather lie slain in battle than lose the freedom gained by their forefathers. My legions march north. The nights grow long and the wolf grows hungry. Rome demands blood. I will be outnumbered. The valor of my men stretched to breaking. The enemy? Merciless. The Senate expects defeat. Yet the goddess Fortuna favors the bold. Should have destroyed Carthage. Every man, woman, and child many years ago. Enough! Saguntum is lost, and our Western allies have failed us. Where was the last report of his whereabouts? My spies in Iberia tell me his fleet has sailed. We must expect an invasion at Massalia! This is nonsense! No fleet has sailed! Rome controls the Mediterranean! He's not attacking, he's making allies! At this very moment, he courts the Macedonians, the Greeks! Illyria will rise up against us, and the Adriatic will be lost once more. Ridiculous! Epirus won't stand for it. Our legions have sole military access to their land. I believe the attack will come from Africa itself. He intends to cross the Mediterranean and invade from Sicily. Syracuse will revolt and sweep up from the south. That's wild ship We cannot afford He will come not from the south, nor the east. Our mercenaries in the north report that he has forged an alliance with the tribes of the Po Valley. He intends to circumnavigate Massalia and march his army. Over the Alps, perhaps! He would lose half his army from attrition alone. The other half would desert. We must defend the mountain passes. Do you expect the Gauls to welcome him when he arrives? I suppose he will bring with him an army of enemies. I dare say that would be quite a feat, even for the great Hannibal Barker. Sega. Hannibal, my son. Stand before the gods and swear. From this day until your last. That you will always be an enemy of Rome. I 
the treaty that binds you. Your treaty is unacceptable. I will remind you. The last time Carthage resisted Rome, your fathers were buried in the fields of Sicily. <laughs> that didn't greet the dirt with open arms we sent to serve Neptune in the waters of the Agates. <laughs> the Mediterranean is undoubtedly ours, not yours. You gifted us whatever scraps of it you held when you and your mercenaries scurried back to your barbaric fishing village. And I am sent here to ask you to decide between peace and open conflict as if you truly have a choice. I choose war. Peggy 16. Sega. You are my son, but I've done all I can to protect you. The gods smile on you, Octavian. You're a good soldier. I'm a politician. We don't need more politicians. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. Why do you think Caesar favored you so? I was loyal. No, Octavian. He saw in you the potential to continue his legacy. Not to follow him, but to exceed him. Antony cannot be trusted. His heart lies in Egypt. We must confront the reality that civil war is inevitable. And how will bloodshed save the people of Rome? You are not meant to save them. You are meant to lead them. troubled when their moment has come. I am not Caesar. I don't have his strength. The people loved him, and they will love you. You can't think like an ordinary man. You must reach beyond mortal ambition and do what has never been done. To survive, my son. Rome must have an emperor. Sega. Embody the very nature of war! Stop! 
right now! I beg you! You would plunge Greece into chaos! Then from chaos, we will rise! We failed you. Accused you and banished you. And you prayed for the gods to punish us. So they inspired our enemies. Sent savages. They took our land, sieged our city to slaughter husbands, wives, and children. We are the city you loved, but we are destined to be the world. Marcus Furious Camillus, Rome needs you. Peggy 16. Sega. Sega. Yeah! 
Sega. 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 You built an empire beyond imagining. The pinnacle of human achievement and the envy of the world. Did you think it would last?
The Eternal City. That glorious monument to power, culture, and learning. But the old wolf lies wounded by jackals, encircled by vultures. Worried to death by a thousand tiny, vicious mouths brought low by your own arrows. These are the death throes of Rome. The light of civilization dims and gathers. And you've such precious time left to hide your women, for your children to cry. Even at the moment of your final defeat, you will take no comfort in oblivion. For I am coming for you. I ride with a million warriors! I bring the end of days! I am the Scourge of God! And I will watch your world burn. Sega. Ah, Rome. Her glory once brought light to the world, driving the shadows away. But it could not last forever. They whisper that the end of days is upon us. Emperor Theodosius, his sons divided our great empire as if it were a plaything to be shared. As Rome fades, our new seat of power at Constantinople grows. Gold and silk flow through our markets, and our coffers swell with new trade. But the Visigoths have taken our division as a portent of opportunity. And King Alaric marches on our border with Dacia. To the east, the Sassanids' motives are clouded. Our truce holds, but any redeployment to face Alaric will not go unnoticed. Western Empire's power wanes, overwhelmed by slavering barbarians from the north. It is now the time to amputate this diseased limb. Could this be our opportunity to reclaim the Empire? Behold, the white horse, a crown given to us. And we shall go out to conquer, just as we have done a thousand times before. In the name of Almighty God! Yeah. <laughs>
Sega. The desert is unforgiving. It does not forget. From the shores of the Danube to the sands of Egypt and Arabia, the Eastern Roman Empire swells. They think they have tamed these lands and count the riches they have plundered. They give thanks to their god with extravagant tribute. But there is another whose hunger for gold must be sated. Sega. To lead, a man must understand that there are forces in this world which he cannot change. The balance has shifted. Our land is under siege. A great horde of demons, terrible and merciless, advances towards our homes, destroying everything in its path. Our allies turn against us. Their people broken. In fear, they join with the Huns. To protect our lands, our people will have to face them in battle. But a cold wind blows from the east and the fields are bare. Even the strongest men become powerless in the face of starvation. The very ground which sustained us is now our enemy. So, we take the only path left open to us. Leave in search of a land where we might start our lives anew. There are some things that cannot be changed. So a leader must look to the things which can. 
I will seek balance for my people. For I see the black horse, and he who sits upon it holds a pair of scales. Sega. With bow and sword, I covered your son in eternal darkness. I set your villages ablaze and warmed my palms. They said I was savage, that I was bloodthirsty. Men of words, they give names to those that would fill history's pages with the oblivion of men. Behold the Nashan horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hell followed with him. I fear no judgment. Open your books, learned men, and write in blood. I am Attila. I am the scourge of God. By what name will they know you? Sega. Peggy 16. Sega.
Peggy 16. Sega. Retake the former Western Roman Empire from the barbarians. Deliver it to our beloved emperor on a plate. These games should be in your honor. When I heard Justinian had you in mind, I can't say I was surprised. After all, you were his father's favorite bodyguard. Not to mention your accomplishments at the Battle of Dara. But the way you suppressed the riots in Nika. You are the last of the great commanders. And your loyalty is clearly above question. However, the ruins of Rome are a wild and unpredictable place. A lot can happen out of reach of these fragrant walls. A man might look about him and think perhaps that it is all rightfully his. Sega. Sega.
Sega. Sega. Sega.
Sega. Peggy 16. Sega. Sega.
mighty Sigma, savior of the Empire, give me strength. For though I dedicated my life to eradicating it, it feeds, it grows, devouring all. There must be a final answer to halt its advance. But the tide of war seems endless. The brutal, unthinking bloodlust of the Greenskins. The twisted ambitions of the undead. Dwarven kingdoms stand with us. Truly, what hope is it? Against countless horrors that cannot be named, let alone fought by mortal means. is unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I see it now. The beasts that will devour the world. of men at its heart, a bastion of hope and courage. The Empire. Led by the craven, torn apart by the greedy, weakened and exposed, forever on the defense. But no longer. Now! We unite to purge the evil that dare confront us. Follow me, and we will banish this darkness. I swear this as your emperor.
nothing stirs in the world's edge mountains. Death comes to the Dwarven realms. Centuries I have been the High King. Our enemies have thought us weak. Cowards hiding in the deepest, darkest places. <laughs> Fools. Every wrong is recorded. Every slight against us. Page after page, etched in blood. Clan Gunnison, Carrick Eight Peaks, Joseph Bookman. <laughs> Weird power. 
towers build in there. Bigger and spikier than normal. Time to move, boss. Time to fight. Give the order. Yeah, yeah, the order. Say it, say it. of beauty and darkness. To its south are the Badlands, arid, scorched, home to war-hungry orcs.
north, then. Past the petty fiefdoms of the Border Princes and through Black Fire Pass. Ah, the mountains. Once home to many dwarfs, their numbers dwindle, but some holds remain strong. To the underways. The great roads below, now plagued by greenskins. And here lies the lands of men and the Empire. Each city a refuge, bastions of light flickering in the dark. There is only darkness, for the dead do not rest easily in Sylvania. Over the Grey Mountains, fair Britonia, an easy ally, or perhaps an enemy. And so to the far north, the ice-gripped realm of Norska lies in the shadow of a twisted power. Change is coming. You must conquer this world before others take it. For the first time, the Total War series is giving you a fantasy world to conquer. Four races are at war. Who will you lead? The Empire of Men, brave, well-trained, with unstoppable cavalry. Savage greenskins. A brutal tide of fang and muscle. Stout dwarfs, all but unbreakable in battle and unmatched in close combat. All the dark bloodlust of the vampire counts. Ranks of undead infantry without remorse or fear. Epic fantasy battle on a scale you've never experienced. Choose your side and... Conquer this world.
Sega. Sega.
SEGA I give my body, heart, and soul to the lady whom I seek. No plea for help shall find me wanting. No obstacle will stand before me. sounded, I will ride out and fight in the name of Liege and Lady. That which is sacrament, I shall preserve. That which is sublime, I will protect. That which threatens, I will destroy. For my holy wrath will know no bounds. Honor is all. Chivalry is all. Rejoice, for we, the Knights of Bretonia, will be your shield. Sega. It was a twin-tailed comet that heralded Sigma's coming. But not every celestial body is heavenly. When darkness falls, there are those that turn to the light. And those that would embrace the shadows. The faithful and the dead have been at war for centuries. Now, at its zenith, a victor must emerge. of light and fierce abominations. A 
host of new combatants answer the call. Only one can win in this ageless war. Sega. Ah, Karak Eight Peaks. Queen of the Silver Depths. What riches lie beneath the mountain? What horrors. Few living remember its glory. But the dwarfs do not forget. A warrior king returns to take his ancestral throne from a cruel and cunning warlord, hitherto unchallenged. What fate awaits them in the darkness?
Hey, I'm Leo over from Creative Assembly, and to celebrate 30 years of our studio, we're excited to bring you 30 new Regiment of Renown units for Total War Warhammer 1, which you can download and play for free on August 10th through Total War Access. We are bringing new units to Beastmen, Bretonia, Chaos, Norska, and Wood Elves. Let me take you through a few of my favorites. The Butchers of Kalkengard are enraged minotaurs with cowhide textures and udders for their belt buckle designs. Accompanied by the Sons of Goris, these are Goris's personal unit of centigors. They are beefed up with armor and are able to do magic damage, which is rare for beastmen. Moving over to Bretonia, the Holy Wardens of La Maisontale are devoted pilgrims that have shed their shields for an additional hand weapon for dual wielding. They have both fire and magical attacks. The Knights of the Lionhearted are a chivalric regiment of the Knights of the Realm, which bear the colours and shield of the King himself. They spread fear amongst the enemy while encouraging their allies around them. The Chaos Mirror Guard are the beautiful personal guard of Sigvald. Their mirror armour allows Sigvald to see himself at all times while by his side. They are also quick and immune to psychology. Towering over the Mirror Guard are the Weird Spawn. These are grotesque creatures which can sunder their enemy's armour. Over in Norska, the Brutes of the Hound are berserkers who imbue the savage nature of the Hound God. They are unbreakable in combat, causing fear in their enemies. Perhaps even more terrifying is the Soul Crusher, a behemoth of a creature. This war mammoth strides into battle, leaving destruction for miles behind it. Lastly, the Wood Elves Wild Riders of Kurnos are Orion's personal guard, who bring about the change of Orion each year. They protect those around them with the Guardian ability. But, my favourite unit of all has got to be the Firebark Elders. These are tree kin that have been set ablaze and now protect others from fire whilst they still burn. All of these units will be available to play for free through Total War Access on August 10th. Thank you for supporting us for the past 30 years, and we hope you enjoy our little birthday present. Ragnar Lothbrook lies dead in the Northumbrian dirt. Veins choked with Anglo-Saxon wrath and viper's venom. Revenge was swift. His sons laid waste to the British Isles, splintering the land and slaughtering all who opposed them. The Viking hordes swept west, an insatiable force that brought Alfred the Great to his knees. But some men can only be pushed so far. The year is now 878 AD. Whilst Norsemen settle land they once pillaged, Alfred of Wessex seeks to unite the Isles under one banner. But here stand a new wave of the ambitious and hungry, ready to stake their claim to Britannia. Kings will rise. One will rule. the presence of heathens, so there might be peace. And oaths were broken. I forgave. I even lined their pockets. But the Danes will not be sated. Enough! Patience is not thy will. Ah! 
It is the kingdom of Wessex! And my divine rule. We found him outside the camp. He's one of ours. Brother, what have you seen? King Cena. He butchered, slaughtered. There's something else. He wasn't alone. I will unite us with fear, will, and force! One land, one other, one king! From the southern valleys to the northern peaks of Areri, Rodri made us a nation. But he is gone. Anarut? <laughs> no. His eldest is no equal. He plays upon the throne. What use is that against mercy and steel and fire? His brothers are no better. Warring over petty quarrels. Aye, it is true. King Rodri's legacy will crumble with his bones. We are in God's hands now. Anarud, my son. My kingdom is bare. We must build. We must become learned. We must have pride. Anarud, you will lead our kingdom to greatness. And all will know. My life was to serve others. Now, as your king, I wish to serve you. We have toiled together. We have led together. <laughs> Reaped together. But other 
others will wish to take what is ours, to shackle us to their will. I was a slave. Saxons, Gaelic warlords, and Vikings. Rewrite history in huge real-time battles and addictive sandbox campaign. Kings will rise. One will rule in Thrones of Britannia.
Welcome, my lord, to the new world. Before us lies Alfwen, home of the High Elves. At its center, at the very Isle of the Dead, the great vortex surges and swirls. Forged by the High Elves in ages past to siphon the winds of magic and defeat the chaos invasion that threatened to engulf the world. As the fork-tongued comet of Sotek made its recent passage across the heavens, it breached the Great Warding, making it dangerously unstable. There are those who would unbind the Vortex and exploit its wild energies. Still others seek to heal the Cyclone and preserve the Order. Each race must perform a series of arcane rituals, both to decide the fate of the Vortex and prevent the other races from achieving victory. Let us take a closer look at the High Elves. Led by Prince Tyrion, they are a proud, arrogant, and highly developed people, combining peerless martial prowess with an uncommon grasp of the magical arts. The High Elves are in love with politics, and the most successful elven leaders use their influence to court the most powerful generals and meddle in the affairs of other, lesser races. The High Elves are also master traders and exploit their contact to gain valuable intelligence on the affairs of their trading partners. To the north of Althuan lie vast, near unassailable fortress gates, guarding the outer reaches of the elven homelands. It would take a formidable force indeed to breach these ramparts. And now, the elves have enacted a ritual. This puts them one step closer to stabilizing the vortex and achieving their ultimate victory. With continents separated by mighty oceans, your forces may have to embark on perilous journeys to reach foreign soil, risking encounters with deadly storms. Even skirting the coastlines can pose a threat as treacherous reefs and shallows take their toll on the drafts of your transport ships. Here in Lustria, certain races of the old world have gained footholds. Will you put their outposts to the sword, or make allies of these adventurers, securing their loyalty for the challenges to come? Across the landscape lie the ruins of ancient cities. You may choose to erect new settlements in their place, or instead delve them for hidden riches and lost magical artifacts. Dangers may lurk in the depths, however. Be ever watchful, for rogue armies roam these lands. Composed of warriors from many races, they lay aside their former animosities and band together in the pursuit of riches and power. Not all legendary lords campaign within their homelands. The High Elf Archmage Teclis begins here on the Turtle Isles, deep in Lizardman country. He faces a wholly different set of challenges from his brother Tyrion in Althuan. Lustria's jungles are the domain of the lizard men and their fearsome saurian beasts. The slan mage priests rule over this place, directing the lizard men according to the great plan decreed by the old ones. They too seek to preserve the vortex and prevent calamity. The geomantic web, ancient lines of power connecting the great temple cities, lies in disarray. Should the lizard men revitalize these strands, their efforts to enact the great plan will be much enhanced. And here we see Lord Mazdamundi, mightiest of the living slan. He and his army have adopted the astromancy stance, granting them unmatched insight into their surroundings. Finally, let us join the legendary Saurus warrior Krokgar and his lizard men cohorts as they prepare to do battle with a high elf force at the ancient portal of the Fallen Gates.
millennia ago. A great vortex was forged to protect the world from a terrible threat. Now this vortex falters, and all stands at the brink of ruin. From all sides, powerful forces gather to harness its energies for their own purposes. The noble High Elves, proud defenders of Oswald. From the jungles of Lustria come the cold-blooded Lizardmen. The Skaven stir in vast subterranean lairs. And the sadistic Dark Elf hordes spew forth from Nagaroth. The race is on. And the fate of the world will lie in the hands of the victor. These worlds have known no peace. The New World, home to the most ancient of rivalries. In the Old World, cultures clash, and ever the threat of chaos looms. Now these collide. Wars will be fought across unimaginable distances. Now is the time of mortal empires. Switch! 
bitches! All all levers! Make it break, bust! Yes, yes! <laughs> It started very poorly. Coast hunt down those lizard trinkets, and we will find them. <laughs> Fortune favors the infamous.
I'm Dylan Sprouse. Uh, my first Total War was Medieval 2. Hours and hours sunk in and then I modded it. Normally, when you go through your day, you're not like, how would I get stabbed brutally? But today was just that day. <laughs> Annihilate them! The day of reckoning is now. Fear the shadows. Fear my name. A leaf, a gnar. A vision comes to me. Vicious. Grotesque. Lustful. The stench of death. Sounds of agony. The ritual of death night. I feel it in the meadows. I sense it in the air. Your wickedness growing. Chaos spreading throughout my beautiful land. And I grow weaker. The sword of Cain. The maker of widows. I know you seek it. But your efforts are futile. For I, Alariel the Ever Queen, mother of all, will bring the light to end your darkness, Crone Halibron. Mother of all, will bring the light to end your darkness.
faith. Dogs of war. Total war. <laughs> it's me, Brian Blessed. I came to this character, you know, Gotrek, uh, and I looked at the script and it was sensational. Yeah, I thought his character was quite mind-blowing. Where's the kill? I don't believe that death exists. Life is the last word. I, therefore, I have a love of life. And have a love of adventure. And I am 50% actor and 50% uh, adventurer. Spoils of war, all for me. <laughs> Time to get paid. Godrick, turn this up. God! <laughs> God! What is marvelous about it? He's fearless. He has no fear of any blood in him or anybody. He'll face anything. Ready, friend! And he, he, he talks about, you know, I'll, go, I'll go to the Iron Halls or I'll go and meet me. It's almost like Van Halen. But in actual fact, he's a one-off. He transcends death. He sees death as another gateway. He doesn't see it as something depressing or going to sleep. He sees it as another. And he is... Absolutely a warrior. He is utterly a warrior. A mighty death! I'll do the fighting. Onwards to death! Zarka. A demon cruel beyond compare. Imprisoned by fools who sought to harness his dark might. All soon perished. Till the demon could not slip his chains. Millennia passed. Then mortal greed found him once more. The drinker of worlds was loose. Yet, in a twist of fate, Zarkhan's Liberator became only another cage. Raging at their undesired bond, demon and host enact vengeance upon this world. All shudder, save for the Skaven. Deep in their under-empire, noisome warlords plot to seize this hell-sent power. The Eshin master assassin must hunt it down, else lose his night lord's capricious favor, a fate every Skaven fears. So Snitch's poison blades will find their target, whomever it may be. The Witch King knows well where Tarkan lurks, for its host dances to his tune. Malekith promises the elixir to subjugate the demon shade, if the fabled scrolls of her party are first brought to him. Tarkan's possession has cost Malus Darkblade dearly. He cannot refuse. To the rat-infested Southlands, he must go. Rat Deathmaster and Druki Tyrant, bound for battle, but neither knowing it yet. All the world will quail when 
shadow meets flame. It has been many years, but this city will never be safe. Not whilst he is still out there. Peggy 16. The Empire, long divided, must unite. A great dynasty burns. And tyrants rule over the ashes. Light dims. Shadows grow ever darker. Ambition corrupts the future. And harmony shatters in the flames of turmoil. Yet from the cinders, the powerful and righteous emerge. Long united, must divide, and death. 
destiny be shaped by its champions. She's just an outlaw. What threat could she really pose? Threat? Only be slight. But if it is left unchecked, the wound will fester all the same. Pain will be so unbearable. Death would be 
a mercy. Coalition can save them. They are the dogs barking at the tiger. They cannot match my ambition. They cannot overcome my strength. They will bow before my rule. <laughs> land has been scarred by war, ravaged and abandoned by those unworthy of my ability. Who will 
your fight, not for greed, but for peace. They say there is one, a man of honor, who seeks me. Is he worthy? Yes, perhaps he is. Suffering, corruption, it ends today, the mandate of heaven is lost, the Han must be overthrown. Our strength is not in our steel, but in our numbers! The yellow sky must rise! And until it does, the earth will run red with blood! There is a head to every family. But does this give them the right to lead? Should a good leader seek peace? Or opportunity? They order us into battle? Or do we follow them? Do they serve the people? Or themselves? They do what must be done. And 
so shall I. Sons are born in the shadow of their fathers. But the day will always come when they must stand alone and are faced with a choice. Do they follow the path put before them? Or take a different road? Our 
ancestors dreamed of peace. But all we know now is war. One day, one day my name shall echo through these valleys. How much blood has been spent? And yet, unity is still so far from reach. Are we no better than the Han? Are we as savage as they say? Without unity, we will all fall. No. No surrender! No surrender! One tribe! One king! Rage, goddess. Sing of the rage of Peleus' son, Achilles. Murderous. Doomed. children of men, but as leaves that drop at the wind's breath. Peggy 16 In this age of myth, heroes walk the earth. Yet it takes only a single impulsive act to spark a conflict that will shake the world. Audacious Paris, Prince of Troy, takes beautiful Helen from her palace in Sparta. As they sail away, Helen's husband, King Menelaus, curses her name. He will bring his errant wife home, whatever the cost. King Agamemnon, wide ruling lord of finely walled Mycenae, Hears his brother's call. He summons Achaean heroes from far and wide. Among them, swift-footed Achilles and Odysseus, the silver tongue. All mortals' thoughts turn towards the high peak of fog-shrouded Olympus. Even warriors marching to war and slaughter must seek the favor of the gods. While Paris and Helen flee east to Troy, a formidable Achaean army musters in the west. 
As Hector greets Paris at the gates of Troy, a wind from the west raises the dust at his feet. He looks to his brother and asks, what have you done? My wife! You've risked the safety of Troy. She must go back to her home. You will condemn me to my death. Troy is my home now. You have my oath, brother. She will be returned to you. Call Troy your home then. Brother, I can fight. Go. Seek shelter. There'll be plenty of fighting ahead. Peggy 16. Who has not heard of swift-footed Achilles, son of Thetis, the mightiest warrior ever to take the field? But one who is governed by his heart. As he grieves fallen Patroclus, the fire in his breast grows. He will have vengeance. Peggy 16. One does not insult the king of Sparta without consequence. As Paris flees to Troy with his betrothed, Menelaus seeks one thing, and one thing alone. Retribution. Calling his allies to arms, he will take the field once more. For the honor of Sparta! Peggy 16. Driven by his love for fair Helen, Hector's brother Paris has invoked the fury of the Achaeans. While the people of Troy rejoice at their union, Paris must now heed the call to arms. In the coming conflict, the lover 
must become the warrior if Troy is to prevail. Peggy 16. King Agamemnon of Mycenae, far-sighted ruler, calls all Achaeans to war. Treacherous Troy will pay dearly for the theft of Helen, his brother's wife. With the finest Achaean generals beside him, his is the true voice of command. Silver-tongued Odysseus, there is only one response to Queen Helen's abduction, and that is war. In Total War Saga Troy, you can rewrite the events of one of the greatest conflicts ever told, the Trojan War. As Odysseus besieged the legendary city of Troy in three ingenious and equally devastating ways, all based around prominent theories from throughout the ages as to what the iconic Trojan horse really resembled. The walls of this city may appear to be mighty, but no defenses are impregnable. Using gargantuan siege towers, take the fight to the walls. Slaughter the Trojans atop and force them back into their pitiful city. The enemy are unaware of your presence. Position your troops to retain your advantage once the attack begins. Sneak troops into the city in a vast, horse-headed vessel fit for the gods. Under the Cloak of Darkness, use guerrilla tactics to sabotage the unbreachable city gates, leaving the Trojan warriors defenseless, allowing the Achaean soldiers to begin raising the city to the ground. Their walls have been breached! Even the greatest defenses cannot stand against nature's might. In a land ravaged by earthquakes, patience is rewarded. Send your troops forward. Troy is yours for the taking. Myth meets history in a war that will define the ages. Experience the legend of Troy this summer. Victory will make... Peggy 16. The lives of man pass as the movement of the heavens. Come the morn, they rise, fragile, tempting the hope and promise of a new day. But the daylight ebbs. And the night brings forth a darkness and a chill that lays them down to resignation and rest. And so it is with men. One generation withers away. while another comes to life.
What is the nature of an Amazon? We've been hunting together so long. For honor. For redemption. Connected as much by the blood in our veins as by the blood we shed. For an Amazon, yesterday's only a myth. And tomorrow is just a prophecy. Today is war. Here is a thing of glory and greatness. We have a foe worth the killing, and Frenchmen beside me who wait upon my command. I can also feel an inspiring speech coming on. So listen to me. Now, listen to me. Saint Geneviève protect us. The poxed stench of those English knaves is as bad as their sour beer. My horse is quite disturbed by it. And as I lack my horse, I would not have him upset for much longer. So what we gonna do today? We can throw rocks at each other again. That sounds like it could be fun. Yeah, let's do it. Why are you like just sitting around doing nothing? 